fight, fight, on the rooftop of a building in the distance. The figure of the evil demon was hidden in a cloud of black mist. It planned to take advantage of the fight between the two sides, causing mutual harm, and then reap the benefits. That human should be the holy soul, weird. Why can't I see through it? The evil demon stared at Chu Shu in the distance. Not sure if it was an illusion. Every time it looked at this human, it would faintly feel a sense of unease in its heart. As if there was an invisible pressure pressing on its chest. It seems that this is the uniqueness of the holy soul. When I obtain it, I should also have this kind of invisible oppressive force. The evil demon concluded. But it didn't notice that in the moment it shifted its gaze and looked at others. Chu Shu suddenly turned his head. He looked at it with a mocking glance. Inside the community. The two generations of Ghost Rider were surrounded by the crowd. Johnny was fine. After transforming, he still retained some self awareness. But it was the spirit of vengeance that controlled his body. Step back. Otherwise, judgment, the spirit of vengeance did not feel fear. With its burning fingers, it pointed at the crowd and issued its final warning. Robbie, on the other hand, was different. His ability did not come from the true spirit of vengeance. Instead, it came from the soul of his deceased uncle, a burning spirit. So his strength was far inferior to Johnny's. But the advantage was, after transforming, Robbie could retain more self awareness. But was this really a good thing? You, facing the approaching crowd, Robbie felt a huge amount of pressure. Among these people, he felt several threatening presences. Especially the girl in the red dress, a great threat. Mr. Skulls, no matter who you are, this is not a place for you to run wild. Black Cat changed her lazy appearance, she revealed the metal claws on her gloves. Coldly said. Wanda remained silent. A crimson energy appeared in the palm of her hand. This was her new home, and she would not allow anyone to destroy it. Mirror space. Seeing the situation getting more and more chaotic, Chu Shu, who had been watching the show on the side, released the mirror space and trapped everyone inside. He didn't want to finish the fight and lose his home. Enough. Your souls will be judged. The spirit of vengeance, who had taken over Johnny's body, noticed the change in space. Instantly lost patience, he pulled out the burning chain wrapped around his shoulder, swung it around and threw it towards Gwen, who was closest. Gwen immediately swung a cobweb and dodged, at the same time shooting a cobweb towards Felicia's face. Roar. The spirit of vengeance grabbed the cobweb. Roared in anger. Hellfire instantly ignited the cobweb and quickly burned back towards Gwen. Let go quickly. Black Cat reminded. But Erica, who was beside her, reacted faster and directly threw a flying dart. Cutting off Gwen's cobweb. Then. This silent and taciturn female assassin. Directly threw a series of flying darts, shurikens, and combos at Johnny's face. But these conventional cold weapons could not harm the spirit of vengeance, who followed the laws of magic. The moment the flying darts made contact, they were melted into molten iron by the hellfire on Johnny's body. It seems I need to prepare some magic weapons for you. Chu Shu sat on the steps in front of his door. Holding a bucket of popcorn he didn't know where he got it from, he enjoyed watching the fight. Honestly. Watching women fight is truly enjoyable. Especially watching beautiful women fight. One move, one technique. Just like dancing. One word, elegance. Johnny, I'll help you deal with these two. Robbie, who had just transformed into Ghost Rider, wanted to join the fight. Boom. Sky raised her hand and unleashed a shockwave. Sending him flying. Then, Wanda followed up with an attack. The crimson energy controlled Robbie's body lifting it into the air and slamming it down heavily. With each impact, the origin magic power generated a shockwave, attempting to break down Robbie's skeletal structure. Can't win. Absolutely can't win. Robbie was completely defenseless against the combo of Sky and Wanda. Johnny. Helpless, he could only seek help from his senior. Just as the spirit of vengeance was about to support Robbie, Chu Shu, who had been watching the show, added some difficulty. This won't work. Your weapons can't hurt it. As he spoke, Chu Shu took out the reality gem. With a thought, a pile of Mjolnirs fell from the sky and landed beside Black Cat and the others. One for each person. Blow up its skull for me. Upon hearing Chu Shu's words, Black Cat and the others didn't hesitate. 
They each picked up a Mjolnir. Boom. Accompanied by the sound of thunder. Black Cat, Sky, Erika, Gwen, and even Wanda. All transformed into female Thors, wearing the iconic Asgardian armor and winged helmets. The spirit of vengeance, who had taken over Johnny's body. Seeing this scene. Confusion appeared in the eye sockets of the skull for the first time. Hey, why can't I lift it? Only Peter Parker bent down, tugged for a while, but couldn't lift a Mjolnir. In the end, he could only deflate and give up. Well then. You guys, hurry up and fight. This thing. Damn, it's toxic. Chu Shu finally experienced what Ultron felt at that time. When he used the reality gem to create a bucket of popcorn, he didn't feel much. But when he changed it to a fabricated Mjolnir, the backlash of the universal rule instantly intensified countless times. Actually, thinking about it, it's understandable. After all, Chu Shu didn't just fabricate a few Mjolnirs so simply. He greedily replicated the true power of Thor. It was like creating several female Thors out of thin air. Damn. No wonder you need to collect all six gems to snap your fingers. Chu Shu finally understood. Why Thanos had to collect all the infinite gems to snap his fingers. Space gem. Search the entire universe. Mind gem. Identify life. Reality gem. Eradicate physical bodies on the material plane. Soul gem. Eradicate souls. Power stone. Provide energy to carry out such a massive workload. Time gem. Accelerate the process of eradication to achieve instant eradication. All six gems are indispensable. The power of a single gem is far from as powerful as imagined. For example, the time gem doesn't mean that mastering it equals mastering the rules of time and becoming the god of time. It is just a tool that possesses the power of time. Similarly, the reality gem is not an all-powerful wish machine. Distorting the rules of the universe comes with the backlash of the universe's rules. So, can you guys stop admiring yourselves over there? Go up and hammer it. Seeing his children, who had transformed into female Thors, still looking at themselves in awe, Chu Shu became furious. However, upon hearing Chu Shu's voice, the spirit of vengeance, who had taken over Johnny's body, was the first to turn his gaze. You. You shall be judged. You. You should be judged. The vengeful spirit flickered. The burning skeleton body appeared in front of Chu Shu almost instantly. A pair of dark eye sockets in the skull. Staring at Chu Shu intently. Eye of judgment. Activate. Look at me. Your soul will be. The vengeful spirit's words were not finished. A pure white and holy light burst forth before their eyes. As if the Son of God had descended. All darkness, sin, and ugliness. Scattered one after another. The holy light appeared. Enveloping Chu Shu. Vengeful spirit, please tell me, am I guilty? Chu Shu's figure was wrapped in a hazy holy light. Crushing the vengeful spirit. You. Are innocent. The vengeful spirit's voice began to tremble. With each step Chu Shu took forward. The holy light pressed the vengeful spirit, forcing it to retreat several steps. You are innocent. Innocent. The vengeful spirit, suppressed by the holy light, could only turn its skull head to the side. It didn't dare to look at Chu Shu. It could only roar repeatedly. Hey. A smirk appeared on Chu Shu's lips. Joking. Can my holy and pure soul be guilty? Even God would hand me a cigarette and say I'm a good kid. Where are the people? Where did they all go? The group of people who entered the mirror space. From the perspective of the Blackheart demon, they simply disappeared into thin air. At first, it thought it was seeing things, repeatedly confirming. Only then did it confirm that they had indeed disappeared. Could it be? The Blackheart demon suddenly felt a chill. It suspected that the powerful level god father on earth, ancient one, had taken action. It can't be. I came from earth through a small passage, and I haven't used any power since I arrived. I shouldn't have been discovered, right? The Blackheart demon became somewhat afraid. It started to look around suspiciously, just then. The disappeared Chu Shu and his group reappeared. However, the two ghost riders who were fighting them had turned back into humans. You guys shouldn't expect to transform into Lady Thor next time. Given the chance, you're useless. Chu Shu looked at the women with disappointment. He had originally wanted to watch a Hollywood blockbuster. But it turned into a religious propaganda film. And he became the protagonist. So, 
Mephisto sent you too? Chu Shu turned around and looked at Johnny and Robbie. Yeah. Johnny nodded. He explained in detail the agreement between himself and Mephisto. Then Robbie nervously explained his reasons as well. No way. He couldn't win in a fight, and he couldn't escape either. He could only honestly reveal the fact that Mephisto used his uncle's soul to threaten him. I understand. You all have your own difficulties. One wants a vacation, the other wants to save his uncle. After listening to the explanations of the two, Chu Shu pondered for a moment. Seeing Robbie's anxious expression, he showed a kind smile. Don't be afraid, Robbie. I'm known for not holding grudges. But. Chu Shu's tone suddenly changed. His gaze suddenly fell on the Blackheart demon's position. But you guys have to do me a small favor. Noticing Chu Shu's gaze on himself, the Blackheart demon's face was filled with question marks. How is this possible? As a level universe powerhouse, one step further and he could become a heavenly father. How could he be discovered by a weak human? Although the Blackheart demon had a lot of questions in his heart. But now, it is bound by two burning chains, its hands, feet, and tail, thrown at Chu Shu's feet. There is no chance to ask questions anymore. How dare you treat the son of a lord of hell like this? The black-hearted demon, thrown on the ground, roared angrily at the crowd. Its pitch-black body writhed on the ground, like a pupa. Now you know you're someone's son, huh? When you rebelled before, why didn't you think about who your father was? Chu Shu squatted down. He casually plucked a branch from the flowerbed and poked the black-hearted demon with it. Ah! You will regret this, humans, just you wait. The black-hearted demon was about to say, just you wait until I break free from these restraints, then I'll kill all of you. But then it saw Chu Shu, who had always been difficult to gauge in terms of strength. Suddenly, his aura burst forth. Are you the son of the Heavenly Father? The black-hearted demon's voice suddenly became smaller. Its body was no longer wriggling on the ground like a pupa. To be precise, it was a bit confused now. The holy soul that its own father wanted to collect was the son of the Heavenly Father? This can't be right, can it? What's the use of sending two ghost riders to deal with the son of the Heavenly Father when it doesn't come itself? Wait. This is a trap. I've fallen into the trick of this old immortal. Smack. The black-hearted demon just realized. Chu Shu slapped it hard across the face. The slap from the Heavenly Father was not pleasant. And the son of the Heavenly Father was no exception. In a daze, the black-hearted demon seemed to return to its childhood in hell. Make another sound. I'll twist your head off and kick it like a ball. A flaming battle knife appeared out of thin air and was placed against the black-hearted demon's neck. The black-hearted demon didn't dare to move, it recognized this knife. It was the weapon of Bellist, the lord of the thin prison. Next, I ask, you answer. Say one wrong word or say too much, and it's over. Chu Shu was afraid that the black-hearted demon wouldn't understand. So he kindly cut a piece of flesh from its body in advance. Understood, understood. The black-hearted demon nodded repeatedly. Who asked you? Chu Shu raised his hand and slashed. He directly severed one of the black-hearted demon's arms. The pain was unbearable, and the black-hearted demon clenched its teeth. It didn't dare to utter a word. I ask you, how did you come from? Um, what's that hell of yours called? The flame hell. Yes. How did you come from the flame hell to earth? The reason Chu Shu asked this was that the holy place core did not detect the opening of any dimensional channels. In other words, either the black-hearted demon had the ability to shield the holy place core, but this possibility was only 0.267% likely. Or, there was another way to cross dimensions. I came through a small passage. A small passage? Chu Shu heard this name for the first time. It's a crack in the hell plane. Hell used to be a hole, but later it split into multiple dimensions. The fragmented dimensional worlds have some cracks. By traversing dimensions through these cracks, there is a great risk of getting lost in the void world. But the advantage is that it won't be detected by any power. The black-hearted demon explained anxiously. It was through this method that it managed to secretly come to Earth twice without being discovered by its level godfather. It's useless. Chu Shu interrupted the black-hearted demon's explanation. He was somewhat disappointed. He thought he would learn about a more powerful way to cross dimensions. But is this it? 
you have disappointed me, black-hearted demon. After Chu Shu finished speaking, he once again placed the knife against the black-hearted demon's neck. Wait. I know Mephista's weakness. Seeing that Chu Shu was about to take action, the black-hearted demon quickly spoke up. Chu Shu stopped. A weapon stained with holy blood. Your blood, to be exact. Although it's not enough to kill Mephisto. But we can severely weaken its power, the black-hearted demon said excitedly. This was the reason why it risked falling into the void world and came to earth to seize the holy soul. If you don't abandon me, Blackheart, I am willing to serve you. Little Phoenix Fairy, don't rush to worship me as your adoptive father. Tell me your plan first. Sir, it's like this. Mephisto and the flame dimension are bound to each other, it cannot completely leave the flame dimension. It can only project a part of its power to other worlds. And me. I can help you deceive a part of its power to earth. Then, the two of us can join forces to kill it. And divide its power. After listening to Mephisto's plan, Chu Shu didn't know how to comment on Marvel's family relationships anymore. Anyway, he encountered one filial person after another. Either it was a father's love and filial piety. Or it was a father's love and daughter's filial piety. Johnny, Robbie. You both heard what it said, right? I just said, I'm not one to hold grudges. Usually, if I have a grudge, I settle it on the spot. But you too, to be honest, I really appreciate you. I don't want anything unexpected to happen to you one day. After listening to Mephista's plan, Chu Shu called Robbie and Johnny over and spoke to them with great seriousness. So, would you two be willing to help me out? You want us to deceive Mephisto and bring it over? Johnny instantly guessed Chu Shu's idea. As for the so-called threat, he wasn't too concerned. After all, they were the ones who caused trouble in the first place. Anyway, they were willing to do any job. Who cares who they're helping? And they would love to see Mephisto suffer a loss. Even if no one asked, Johnny would be more than happy to do this kind of job. What about me? On the other side, when Mephisto heard Chu Shu and Johnny's words, it instantly realized something was wrong. Shouldn't I be the one to deceive Mephisto? Why are you doing what I'm supposed to do? You? Thank you for providing the information and the plan. Chu Shu sincerely expressed his gratitude to Mephisto. Then he turned around and struck, you. Mephisto widened its eyes. Its super strong self-healing ability was useless against the continuous burning of the flame battle blade. But its formidable vitality couldn't die for a while. It could only endure more pain, watching its life slip away. Finally, as a wave of dark evil aura emanated, Mephisto finally died completely. Chu Shu reached out his hand, and the evil aura on the ground immediately flowed into his body. The system prompt immediately sounded, ding, abnormal energy detected, the exorcism system is purifying it for you. Indeed, these hells are all interconnected. Before this, Chu Shu had never obtained energy from the flame hell, but this absorption wasn't very smooth. It indicates that the energy of the flame hell and the spirit thin hell are fundamentally the same. And this also means, as long as Mephista's plan can succeed, I can obtain a part of Mephista's power myself. Chu Shu narrowed his eyes. In this way, he can break through the dimensional barrier between him and the flame dimension. It will also be much more convenient when invading with Gila in the future. Johnny, Robbie, as long as you can deceive Mephisto and bring it over. In the future, the two of you will be my. No offense, it just slipped out. In the future, the two of you will be my blood brothers, Chu Shu. Chu Shu patted Johnny and Robbie's shoulders. He promised them what he would do after the matter was done. Great, as long as we can save my uncle. Even if it means going to hell, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I won't regret it. Young Robbie obviously took Chu Shu's promise seriously. Patting his chest, he almost made a military oath. Johnny touched his forehead lightly. In the end, he couldn't bear to shatter the child's beautiful illusion of humanity. If I want to trick Mephisto into coming, I might need a bit of your blood. Okay. The interrogation of the Blackheart demon and the conversation with Johnny actually took place in the mirror space. It wasn't in the real world. It was only now that Chu Shu closed the mirror space and sent away the two ghost riders. Chu Shu. Seeing Chu Shu appear again, the people who had been waiting outside immediately surrounded him. Is the danger over? They just left like that? Shouldn't we stop them? 
Then a barrage of questions was thrown at Chu Shu. Can we take them one by one? Chu Shu was surrounded by several women. It was hard to breathe. What about that demon? It? It went home, back to hell. Chu Shu casually answered a question, then quickly escaped from the crowd. He arrived at Spider Gwen and Iron Man, Peter Parker. Peter, what do you think of this armor? Chu Shu tapped Peter Parker's armor, feeling amazed at the direction this world was taking. Peter Parker started making armor. Who could have imagined that? Chu Shu, you. Peter Parker opened his mouth. In fact, he was the one who was more shocked. Who could have imagined that the famous demon hunter would actually live next door? That's right. Now he had to add the title of AI Terminator. Um, Peter. At this moment, Gwen Stacy took off her mask. Giving Peter Parker a double shock, you guys? Peter was completely dumbfounded, he had been working day and night to build the armor. He had planned to show off in front of them after it was finished. But now, he was actually the weakest. Sorry, Peter, actually Chu Shu and I have known each other's identities for a long time. The reason we didn't tell you is because. Gwen suddenly didn't dare to continue. Because if she continued, it would become. Because we are not from the same world anymore. Okay, Gwen, you don't have to say it, I understand, I understand. Peter bent down to pick up the iron helmet on the ground and put it on his head. Joy belongs to you guys, the world has nothing to do with me. Well, um, Chu Shu, Gwen, I'm going home. If I don't go back now, Uncle Ben will scold me. A desolate voice came from inside the iron helmet. It seemed to have a hint of crying. Chu Shu looked bewildered. What does this child understand? Gwen also couldn't figure out Parker's behavior. But she didn't have time to think about it now because she had something more important to discuss with Chu Shu. Chu Shu, can I join your superpower team? What? I mean the superpower team you formed. You have so many people with super abilities in your family, they must all be your teammates. I want to join too. Gwen looked serious. Her eyes were filled with anticipation. Chu Shu turned around. His gaze swept across the faces of Wanda, Black Cat, Sky, and Erica. Finally, he turned back and looked at the youthful and beautiful Gwen. You're right. I do have a team. Gwen, welcome to join. Inferno. A place where eternal flames burn. Here, there is also a sky. But the sky is constantly covered by roaring flames, just like the sky on fire during sunset. However, the sky on fire here is not an adjective. This. This is hell. Robbie, who was going to hell for the first time, was shocked by the scene in front of him. As far as the eye can see, everything is burning. Even the air is distorted. Taking a breath, there is a burning sensation that even reaches the lungs. But hell is not empty, on the contrary, there are towering buildings, and in the distance there are structures like elevated bridges. But they are all ruins of buildings, if you have to describe it. Robbie's mind conjured up an apocalyptic scene. It's like a city after a nuclear explosion. That's right. That's accurate. Even Johnny felt that the child's description was accurate. Kid, you described it well. But from now on, don't act like a rookie who just came to hell. Johnny's expression became serious. The creatures in hell are not very friendly to the living. Especially when they think you're an easy target, they become even more unfriendly. Johnny. Where should we look for Mephisto? Robbie was eager to try. He couldn't wait to complete Chu Shu's mission. To save his uncle. Nowhere. It will come to us. Johnny took out a cigarette from his pocket, about to light it, when a blast of hot wind blew. The cigarette was directly lit by the terrifying temperature. It burned completely. Turned into ashes in the blink of an eye. That's why I don't like coming to hell. Johnny's voice just fell. But you still came. Suddenly, a voice replied to Johnny. At the same time the voice appeared, the roaring hot air around them suddenly stopped. The wind ceased. The ashes carried by the wind also froze. Johnny, Robbie, you shouldn't have come empty-handed. An old man in a suit, leaning on a cane, slowly walked out of the frozen flames. The old man had a kind face, but his eyes were filled with an extremely cunning and sinister light. Mephisto. Johnny took a deep breath, suppressing the spirit of vengeance in his heart. He had dealt with this old man countless times before. Every time he saw him, the spirit of vengeance wanted to come out, to transform into Ghost Rider. 
What about the soul I want? Robbie. Mephisto turned his gaze to Robbie. The young Robbie couldn't hide anything on his face. His expression began to change. It was taken by your son. Johnny reacted. He answered first. My son? Blackheart? That's impossible. I locked him up. Mephisto's words were interrupted suddenly, because it really couldn't sense the presence of the Blackheart demon in Inferno anymore. Traitor. On the other side. Inside the holy place in New York. Gwen, the new addition, quickly bonded with everyone. Until now, she finally knew what team she had joined. Ah. Is it true? Gwen was dumbfounded when she learned the truth. She looked at Wanda, who blushed and nodded. Then she looked at the black cat. I don't care, if he dares to ask, I dare to give. The black cat lazily leaned against the sofa. For the convenience of resting, they moved several exhibits and placed a few sofas in the holy place hall. Chu Shu had no objection to arranging the sofas because he also wanted to lie down. The black cat's answer made Gwen silent. Helplessly, she turned her gaze to Erica, who had always been quiet. She hoped to get a different answer from her. I obey orders. Erica spoke sparingly, but she still expressed her attitude. I. Gwen was completely speechless. She felt that her concept of love had collapsed. More importantly, she actually voluntarily applied to join in. I. Gwen touched her slightly flushed cheeks. Is it still possible for me to quit now? You want to leave after coming? Go, go, go. Sky, I've got him under control, this head is for you. Just as Gwen was about to give up, Chu Shu and Sky's game voice came from not far away. Gwen. The combo you just did was beautiful, Sky. If we win this round, we'll be in the top three in the US server. On the sofa at the other end of the holy place hall. Chu Shu and Sky sat side by side, their fingers flying across the screen. But Chu Shu didn't neglect his responsibilities all day long. At least he didn't think so. Chu Shu, there's a big commotion outside, isn't it bad for us to play games every day? Sky asked while farming. Outside, although the Ultron crisis had ended, the negative impact was still fermenting. It was said that the entire Avengers would be held accountable, especially Tony Stark, who created Ultron. First of all, what does the commotion outside have to do with me? Secondly, Sky, you have to understand that I play games with a purpose. On the surface, I'm just playing. But in reality, I'm waiting for Johnny and the others to trick Mephisto over. That's what adults do, you know, you have to constantly ponder the deeper meaning of what adults do. Chu Shu earnestly fooled Sky, but he hadn't finished speaking yet. A familiar voice suddenly sounded in his ear through voice transmission magic. Come to Kamar Taj. It was the voice of the Ancient One. Boss. I'm busy here. Chu Shu glanced at the game that was about to push the opponent's base. But the deeper meaning was, he was worried that as soon as he went to Kamar Taj, Johnny and the others would trick Mephisto over. Boss. I'm busy here. Kamar Taj. The Ancient One listened to the reply that came back through magic transmission. Took a deep breath. For some reason, she now had a feeling that her own child had grown up, stopped listening, and had become rebellious. In general, when parents in ordinary families face disobedient children, how do they handle it? The Ancient One had never formed a family, nor did she have her own child. But. Not having eaten pork. Doesn't mean you haven't seen a pig run. Boss. Let's talk properly. We're getting old, let's not get angry. And I'm really busy over here. Chu Shu arrived at Kamar Taj, nervously looking at the Ancient One. The Ancient One smiled and remained silent. After a while, she slowly spoke. Are you busy climbing ranks or deceiving Mephisto? The Ancient One had a kind smile on her face. Chu Shu's eyes lit up, instantly capturing the key point of these words. Boss, you also. Climb ranks? The Ancient One took a deep breath. She suspected if this kid had a special ability called 100% infuriating people. Every time she interacted with Chu Shu, the Ancient One felt her limited lifespan rapidly decreasing. But despite that, the Ancient One still answered Chu Shu's question. The game you're playing, I also created an account. Stop. I know what you want to say. I don't need you to bring me. I don't have time to play with you. The Ancient One directly blocked Chu Shu's words. She created an account out of curiosity, 
wanting to see what exactly was so attractive that it kept her away from her duties in the holy place of Asgardian. Now let's talk about business. I won't stop you from dealing with Mephisto, do whatever you want. I know you're already the Demiurge, but an enraged true Demiurge is still not something you can handle. In necessary situations, you can come find me. The Ancient One's tone was calm. Once again, she emphasized her willingness to support Chu Shu. Thank. Don't thank me yet. Chu Shu's words of gratitude hadn't even been spoken yet. The Ancient One waved her hand. We're done talking about your matters, now let's talk about mine. Smack. The eye of Agamotto was slapped onto the table. The commotion was so great. This time, Chu Shu's eyelids twitched in fear. What the hell? What's wrong with her? Didn't I return everything to her? She wouldn't be trying to frame me, saying that I tampered with the eye of Agamotto, right? Huh? Tampered with? Why didn't I think of that before? While Chu Shu was brainstorming, the Ancient One spoke. Do you know how much damage you've caused to the timeline? Before, I could still barely sort out the timeline and see a bit of the future. Now, the timeline is completely messed up. Almost nothing I saw in the future will happen anymore. The Ancient One's face was filled with displeasure. What's the difference between the time gem that can't predict the future and a decoration? Boss, it's not entirely my fault. And besides, a changed future might not necessarily be a bad thing. Chu Shu spread his hands, indicating that he wouldn't take the blame for this. Other changes might not be bad, but there's one. You must help me restore it. The Ancient One's expression turned serious. Stephen Strange. The person who will succeed me in the future. In the original timeline, he would have a car accident soon, leaving his hands disabled. In order to restore his hands, he would eventually embark on the path of magic. In the Ancient One's words, Stephen Strange's life was narrated in detail. As if it had been arranged. But now, because of you, many things in the future won't happen anymore. Just like Ultron, appearing early and being destroyed early. The Sokovia Crisis no longer exists, more importantly. That car accident, which had a profound impact on Stephen Strange's life, won't happen anymore. I've examined countless possibilities of the future. In a scenario where no one interferes, Stephen Strange will never embark on the path of magic again. Speaking of this, the Ancient One frowned slightly. In the original timeline, Stephen Strange was her successor. But now, with Chu Shu, this, this, the Ancient One thought for a long time not knowing what to make of Chu Shu. Successor. This guy is too lazy. He doesn't even want to be a holy place Asgardian, and I expect him to protect the multiverse? Sigh. Thinking of this, the Ancient One couldn't help but sigh again. So what do you want me to do? I can't just cause a car accident and kill Strange, can I? Chu Shu asked curiously. Then the Ancient One fell silent. That's right. Whether you artificially cause a car accident or use some other means. As long as you can get Strange back on track. Chu Shu widened his eyes. He found it hard to believe that these words were coming from the mouth of the Sorcerer Supreme, the Ancient One. It's like hiring a hitman from the underworld. Who? Help me create an accident and kill someone, someone, someone. That doesn't seem appropriate, does it? I feel a little guilty. Chu Shu felt that this matter was troublesome and wanted to decline. You choose. Either get Strange back on track and take my place. Or you take my place and become the Sorcerer Supreme, protecting the Earth from invasion by multidimensional beings. After finishing, the Ancient One added, Once you become the Sorcerer Supreme, you can't be lazy anymore. Then I'll go find a car. Chu Shu said without hesitation. Leaving Kamar Taj. Chu Shu returned to the holy place in New York with a pensive expression. Does the Ancient One have something to tell you? Wanda looked at Chu Shu's pensive expression, worried. Yeah, she wants me to help her fix the timeline. Fix it in a physical sense. Chu Shu frowned. It's not difficult to find a car and kill Strange. The problem is not to kill him, but to leave him half dead, preferably with his hands crippled, just like in the movie. It's really testing my driving skills, since learning teleportation magic. Chu Shu rarely even walks, let alone drives. Going anywhere is just a matter of an instant. I need to practice my driving skills, just as Chu Shu was thinking about whether to buy a car or not. There was a sudden fluctuation in the core of the holy place. At the same time, Texas, 
near the town of Woodland where Johnny had been living incognito. On a deserted desert, a deep abyss like spatial rift appeared, with a crimson glow inside. Like a gateway to a world of fire, it seems what you said was right. I did sense the traces left by Blackheart, an old man in a suit, leaning on a cane. Slowly walked out of the rift, his eagle like eyes scanned the surroundings with a sinister gaze. And soon, he found the location where Blackheart had first arrived on Earth. Woo. Dot woo. A whimpering sound came from behind the old man. It was Robbie, who had no mouth. Johnny had disappeared without a trace, leaving only him, following Mephisto back to Earth. Woo. Dot woo. Robbie desperately tried to feel with his tongue. But he couldn't find his mouth and he couldn't speak. He he. Mephisto turned around. His cunning gaze swept over Robbie's terrified face. Little guy, don't you know, that demons are the best at deception? When Mephisto thought about the fact that there were actually humans who dared to deceive him, he found it somewhat amusing. Don't they know? Demons are the spokespersons for cunning, deceit, evil, and deception, right? Robbie. Think about your uncle Eli, then put out your wrist. Are you sure? You won't reveal what you know? Mephisto turned around. He raised his cane and pointed it at Robbie from a distance. Robbie's disappeared mouth instantly reappeared. He could speak again. Ah. Robbie excitedly touched his own mouth. The look in his eyes when he looked at Mephisto also carried a hint of fear. I. I really have told everything I know. It was the Blackheart demon who stole your holy soul. It came out while I and Johnny were fighting the target, and it kidnapped the target. Then it went into hiding. Robbie's eyes filled with fear. Five, six, seven. He said incoherently. Oh, it's this kind of low-level lie without any technical content. Mephisto became a little impatient. Robbie, do you think I'm an idiot? I know the strength of you and Johnny very well. Blackheart couldn't possibly take away your holy soul from you, even if caught off guard. And? You said you and Johnny were fighting the target? That human? Hey. As far as I know, that human's strength is even inferior to Blackheart's. But you can have a difficult and evenly matched fight with him? Mephisto's information about Chu Shu was still stuck in the Belast era. That was the last time Belast invaded Earth. The information of being played by a human. At that time, Chu Shu had just entered the level universe and had just touched the threshold of an interstellar warrior. Your information is wrong. That guy's strength has almost reached the level of a heavenly father. Robbie shouted. Lies after lies. Do you think the heavenly father is as common as a piece of obsidian in hell? A human, in such a short time, you're telling me he became a demigod? He he he. Mephisto laughed disdainfully. Robbie and Johnny's deceit made it angry. It captured Johnny. Sealing him in his spirit of vengeance in hell. At the same time, it extracted Robbie's uncle. Eli's soul, from Robbie's body. Also sealed in hell. Robbie, do you know the cost of deceiving me? I'll give you one last chance to tell the truth. As long as you confess, I will forgive your deceit, release your uncle's soul, and also release Johnny. Mephista's words were oppressive, yet they also carried a sense of instigation. I. Robbie opened his mouth. A conflicted expression appeared on his face. Well, it's true that Johnny and I deceived you. In fact, we made a deal with Blackheart. It made us trick a portion of your power onto Earth. Then, Blackheart would join forces with us, using a weapon tainted with holy blood, to kill you. After obtaining your power, we would go to hell and overthrow your rule. Robbie slumped to the ground. Despairingly, he revealed the plan he knew. Mephisto fell silent after listening, because he didn't detect the scent of lies. Robbie wasn't lying and only Blackheart knew his weakness, a weapon tainted with holy blood. This traitor. This time, I will divide its soul into four pieces, sealing them in hell. Let it endure the eternal torment of burning souls. Upon learning of the plan devised by Blackheart and Johnny, Mephisto became furious, but after anger came frustration. This fool. Wouldn't it have occurred to it that I would capture Johnny? Without Johnny, it's alone. Even if it possesses a holy soul, it is not my match. Fool. Can't even understand rebellion. Mephisto cursed, frustrated that his son was not living up to his expectations. His foolish son. Ambitious beyond measure. But determined. Yet truly foolish. 
Take me to it. Mephisto shouted at Robbie. No need to look for it. I'm already here, you immortal old fool. Mephisto's words had just fallen when the voice of the Blackheart demon came from the side. Immediately after. Emerging from the darkness, the Blackheart demon, completely black with hair standing on end like quills, walked out. Seeing the Blackheart demon, Robbie's eyes showed a hint of confusion. You traitor. Mephisto, upon seeing the Blackheart demon, became furious. And you even stole my holy soul. When he realized that he couldn't sense any power within the Blackheart demon, Mephisto became even angrier. You're the real traitor, you immortal old fool. Chu. No, the Blackheart demon immediately retorted. Who took advantage of whom? He wouldn't tolerate Mephisto. A look of confusion appeared in Mephisto's eyes. No, his son, Blackheart, may constantly talk about rebelling. But it wouldn't dare speak to him like this, right? Who are you, really? A murderous intent appeared in Mephisto's eyes. I am your father. A red light flashes from the reality gem. The figure of Mephisto disappears, replaced by a sneering Chu Shu. At the same time, there is a classic Star Wars reference, I am your father. Who are you? Didn't I just say it? I am your father. Chu Shu mocks Mephisto like crazy, trying to provoke him with words, hoping to make his heart condition worse and defeat him without fighting. Unfortunately, Mephisto is a demon, his heart is strong. You sent someone to take my soul, and you ask who I am. Chu Shu. This is impossible. Where is Mephisto? Where did my son Mephisto go? Mephisto finally realizes that something is wrong. He did sense the presence of Mephisto on Earth. It means that his son has indeed come to Earth. But now, Johnny and Robbie are under his control. The pure soul he was looking for is right in front of him. But where is the version of Mephisto? Well, take a look at the energy in my hand. Does it look like your son, Mephisto? An evil resentment appears in Chu Shu's palm. You. Mephisto sees this resentment, his pupils suddenly contract. Human, you will soon understand what mistake you have made. Mephisto's aura is fully unleashed. The old man with a cane instantly disappears. In his place is a disheveled red demon, wearing a red cloak like a vampire. The appearance is not complicated, but it exudes a suffocating and powerful aura. Sly and cunning. Well, you're really scary. Let's not fight, shall we? If you give me your share of power, I'll give you a line too. If you don't abandon, I'll fulfill your wish. Chu Shu's words are not finished. A dazzling red beam of light comes towards him. You, an old comrade who has lived for thousands of years, attacking a young person in their twenties like me, do you have no shame? Chu Shu dodged Murphy's attack with a flash. A red beam of energy struck the Gobi Desert. Instantly, the earth was blasted open, creating a long trench. You really are the Heavenly Father, no wonder Blackheart died at your hands. Seeing the speed at which Chu Shu dodged, Mephisto couldn't help but feel a hint of surprise. He didn't expect Robbie to not lie, this person really became the Heavenly Father. However, Mephisto also only felt a hint of surprise. So what if he's the Heavenly Father? Even if he only brought a portion of his power to Earth. He is not someone that a rookie who has just become the Heavenly Father can challenge. Wait until I kill you, take away your soul. Hope that by then, you can still be so slick-tongued. Mephisto ascended into the air, his cape fluttering in the wind. He reached out his hand. Beams of light shot out from his fingertips each one capable of tearing the earth apart and changing the terrain. Mirror space. In order to avoid trouble with the Ancient One in the future, Chu Shu decisively pulled himself and Mephisto into the mirror space. Mystic magic. What is your relationship with the Ancient One? Seeing the sudden change in space, Mephisto's expression changed. He originally thought Chu Shu was just a human who relied on Gila. But the facts kept slapping him in the face. This guy who relies on others. Not only is he a heavenly father like Gila, but he also seems to have a connection with the magicians of Kamar Taj. No way? You're not scared, are you? As he spoke, Chu Shu tentatively swung his flame battle knife. Sure enough. The wave of the flame blade fell on Mephisto without any reaction. Mephisto didn't even bother to dodge. Being heavenly fathers, is there really such a difference? Chu Shu frowned. The most frustrating aspect of Marvel's power division is right here. 
It's too vague. The Hulk and Hawkeye are on the same level, can you believe it? The so-called level universe, level godfather, is actually more like a threshold. For example, level universe, it refers to interstellar warriors. The lowest threshold is the ability to freely engage in combat in space, with strength equivalent to an interstellar warship. But this, it's just the lowest threshold of level universe. Once you cross this threshold, you become a level universe. But within this level, there are countless level universes stronger than you. I didn't expect Bella's knife to end up in your hands. Mephisto looked at the flaming battle knife in Chu Shu's hand. A hint of disdain appeared in his eyes. Even when Bella was at his peak, he could only have a back and forth fight with my duplication. And you, a human, hey, Mephisto sneered. Human, now I will show you what it means. There is a gap even among the sons of the Celestial Father. Having said that, Mephisto unleashed all his firepower. Infinite hell energy turned into deadly impacts, covering Chu Shu as if it were free. Seeing this, Chu Shu had a thought. The cloak of the great demon shadow behind him immediately unfolded. Like a black hole, it could absorb all of Mephisto's attacks. Here you go. Immediately after, Chu Shu manipulated the cloak. Returning all of the absorbed attack energy. This is a key ability of the cloak of the great demon shadow, that he has discovered through his own exploration. It's somewhat similar to the energy absorption device of Black Panther's battle suit. It can absorb and store a certain amount of energy. It can also release all the absorbed energy. And Chu Shu has not yet discovered the absorption limit of the cloak of the great demon shadow. Boom. The originally dense attacks were concentrated by the cloak of the great demon shadow. It became a pillar of light that pierced through the sky. Mephisto clearly didn't expect Chu Shu to have this move. Caught off guard hit by his own attack energy. His figure was directly bombarded into the sky by a constant stream of energy. When he finally stopped, Mephisto's body was already covered in wounds. Indeed, it wasn't afraid of Chu Shu's attacks, just as it said, there is a gap between the Heavenly Father and the others. But all these attacks came from itself, and its attacks have always been ruthless. Human, you have thoroughly angered me. Flames ignited in Mephisto's eyes, just now, it was still worried that its actions might attract the Ancient One. But now, it didn't care about that anymore. Die for me. Angry Mephisto clenched his fist from a distance. Crack, crack, crack. The mirrored space unexpectedly began to shrink. As if being held in an invisible force. The edges of the mirror-like space shattered one after another, and the hellish flames surged in from the broken parts of space. Like a dam collapsing. But what came out of the cracks in the dam was not a flood. It was the terrifying flames unique to the dimension of fire. It seems Ancient One was right. Chu Shu's face became serious. The Ancient One had previously said that he might not be able to deal with Mephisto. She was right indeed, in terms of strength. Mephisto is the strongest lord of hell. In terms of strength within the entire Heavenly Father group, he is also at the top. Even if it's just a duplication, it is terrifyingly powerful. But. So what? He never fights unprepared battles. Fortunately, I have always been more skilled. Chu Shu cut his finger, letting a drop of blood flow out. Then. He took out the reality gem. Do you know, Mephisto, you have a filial and obedient son. I wish you would die sooner. Chu Shu finished speaking. The red energy of the reality gem burst out. Immediately after. The originally only a drop of holy blood began to replicate continuously, more and more. Finally, in the mirrored space, formed a 220 piece crimson ocean. A sea. Composed of holy blood, Mephisto's expression froze in place. His mouth remained open, and his momentum, his power, also plummeted with the appearance of the surrounding sea of blood. Blackheart was right, Mephisto's weakness is indeed the holy blood. You. Mephisto was about to speak. Chu Shu controlled the sea of blood to spread towards it. I'll splash your face with blood. Chu Shu used the reality gem to conjure a mop. Dipped it in blood. And swung it towards Mephisto's face. Ah 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 ha. Mephisto, touched by the holy blood. Like an ordinary person touching magma, his flesh instantly fell off and emitted a painful scream. Human, I will remember you. I will. At that moment. Mephisto finally realized that something was wrong and tried to escape. 
But he didn't finish his sentence. Splat. A blood-colored spear made of solidified holy blood. Suddenly pierced through its chest from behind. Mephisto turned his head. Only then did he realize that Chu Shu, who had just held them up, was actually a duplication. And it was slowly dissipating. Xiao Mo. Aren't you the best at duplication? How can't you even distinguish between the real and the fake? The real Chu Shu pulled out the blood-colored spear and struck Mephisto's head again. Ah ah ah. Accompanied by a roar full of unwillingness and resentment. Mephisto's body gradually disintegrated, collapsed, and turned into a majestic hell energy, scattered all over the ground. Damn, he exploded his equipment. Chu Shu's eyes lit up. He had been waiting for this moment. With a stretch of his hand, it seemed like a black hole appeared in his palm, and the majestic energy surged in like a pillar. The density and amount of energy were so high. It even exceeded the scene when Belast died. That's right. Chu Shu called this behavior of death explosion of energy, settlement. Just like dropping equipment when killing monsters in RPG games. Ding. Abnormal energy detected. The exorcism system is purifying for you. Accompanied by the system prompt. Chu Shu's aura began to rise rapidly again. Soon, it surpassed Belast's peak. If Chu Shu was just a rookie who had just stepped into the realm of the Heavenly Father before. Now, he was infinitely close to the true Heavenly Father, just one step away from crossing that threshold. Awesome. Feeling the energy inside his body. Chu Shu smiled. Indeed, robbing was much more enjoyable than scamming. No need to prepare any tricks, just lure the dogs, no, lure the demons over and kill them. But my blacklist has gained another name. Chu Shu shrugged. He didn't care at all about offending another big shot. The more lice, the more itchy, indifferent. After absorbing Mephista's energy, Chu Shu released the mirror space. Returned to reality. Except for the rift that was blasted open by Mephista's energy beam on the Gobi Desert. The outside world has hardly changed. The blood sea and the destruction that devastated the heavens and earth all occurred in the mirror space. Everything is normal in the real world. Without the soul of Eli, Robbie, who cannot transform into Ghost Rider, has survived. Chu Shu, where is Mephisto? Did you succeed? Robbie ran over quickly and saw that only Chu Shu had left the mirror space. He immediately understood that the plan had succeeded. Well done, Robbie. Chu Shu nodded and gave Robbie a thumbs up. This kid had heard the conversation between him and Mephisto just now. Every word was true, but when combined, it became a lie. He even managed to deceive Mephisto, who was skilled in deception. You little. You have the style I had back then. Chu Shu, Mephisto sealed my uncle's soul and Johnny in hell. Robbie couldn't care less about Chu Shu's praise. The plan was successful, and while he breathed a sigh of relief, he also felt extremely anxious. Now we have completely angered Mephisto, if it directs its anger towards my uncle and Johnny. What should we do? Robbie was starting to panic. Tricking a part of Mephisto's power to earth and killing it was not a problem. But if they were to go to the flame hell, facing it wouldn't be as simple as a duplication. Don't panic. It's a piece of cake. Chu Shu's little brain quickly came up with a solution. Just a little system bug. I summon. In the Marvel Universe, Johnny Blaze trapped in the flame hell and his spirit of vengeance, as well as. By the way, what's your uncle's name? Eli Morrow. Summon Eli Morrow who is also trapped in the hellfire. As soon as Chu Shu finished speaking, a deep abyss-like crack appeared out of thin air. Then, Johnny appeared in his ghost rider form, looking confused as he walked out of it. After coming out, he transformed back into a human. Chu Shu? Robbie. Seeing Chu Shu in the two of them, Johnny rubbed his eyes, thinking he must have been mistaken. I'm back. It wasn't until he saw the familiar Gobi Desert around him that Johnny was certain he had returned to Earth. He instantly relaxed, almost collapsing to the ground. Robbie quickly went forward to support Johnny. Welcome back, and, uh, what about the other one? Chu Shu frowned. Didn't he summon two? Why did only Johnny and the spirit of vengeance inside him come back? System. Where is Eli Maro? Chu Shu asked in his mind. The target's strength is too weak. According to analysis, it cannot pose any threat to the host. Therefore, it is not classified as a demon. The system provided an answer. 
only life forms and beings from different dimensional dimensions that pose a threat to the host are considered demons. Chu Shu had only paid attention to the phrase, from different dimensional dimensions in that sentence. But he overlooked the important, and, that followed. Uh. What about my uncle? Robbie also noticed that something was wrong. As the crack closed, his uncle's soul never returned. Um. Well, Robbie, would you mind if we find another uncle? Just kidding. Your uncle's situation is a bit tricky, but I will find a way. After all, he is your half-brother from a different father and mother. Chu Shu promised Robbie that he would find a way to save his uncle's soul as long as it was still alive. I believe in you. Robbie nodded solemnly. He could only pin his hopes on Chu Shu now. I have a solution. Just then, Johnny stepped forward. Do you remember what the heartless devil said about the small passage? It's the crack in the dimension of hell. I can use this small passage to infiltrate the flame hell and rescue Eli's might. And only I know where Eli is being held, but. Johnny paused. Chu Shu instantly understood what he meant. But you need someone to distract Mephisto's attention for you? Yes. Johnny nodded and continued, Mephisto is well aware of everything happening in Flame Hell. If no one distracts its attention, it will discover me the moment I step into Flame Hell. EMMM. Isn't it just luring the tiger out of the mountain? Simple. Chu Shu pondered for a moment. Quickly, he thought of a solution, when in doubt, seek the help of an elder. Kamar Taj. The ancient one, who was originally meditating in tranquility, suddenly sensed something. Letting out a deep sigh, after a moment of silence. The ancient one used telepathy magic to send a message to Wang. Prepare yourself. Soon, there will be a level godfather present, making us guests here. Wang, don't ask why, who else could it be? After finishing speaking. The Ancient One severed the telepathic connection with Wang. Stood up and stretched their muscles. It's been over a hundred years since I last took action. Bullying my child. No, bullying my disciple. It's not. What exactly is this kid to me? Chu Shu. You damn it. In the blazing hell. Familiar curses resounded once again. But this time, they finally cursed the right person, and Mo Du was no longer innocently implicated. Establish the dimensional channel. I want to kill back to Earth. Slaughter every life on Earth. Mephisto had never been so furious. Roars echoed throughout hell. No demon dared to touch Mephisto's moldy head at this time. Roaring for a long time, Mephisto gradually calmed down. There's no need to establish the dimensional channel. Unlike Bellist, who was blinded by anger, Mephisto became calm again. It withdrew its order to invade Earth, because it was smarter than Bellist. And more composed. The Ancient One is not dead yet. Is Earth so easy to invade? The Sorcerer Supreme is not long for this world. After she dies, it will be our time to invade Earth. Mephisto made a more sober judgment, but the correct judgment didn't make it feel any better. Mephisto urgently needed a target to vent its anger. Bring Johnny Blaze and that soul called Eli over here. Mephisto gave the order. The demons who had been hesitant to approach finally came forward. Great Lord Satan, the Johnny Blaze you imprisoned, it, it. It suddenly disappeared. The demon in charge of imprisoning Johnny lowered its head and spoke with a diminishing voice. Because it knew the temper of the Lord. What? Mephisto suddenly stood up. Only then did it notice that there was indeed no trace of Johnny Blaze's presence in the blazing hell. But the soul of Eli was still there. I entrust you with one thing. Just one thing. You can't even watch over a sealed human. What use are you to me? Mephisto crushed the demon's head from a distance. Then he pointed to another demon. You, go and bring me that. Before he could finish his sentence, suddenly, a voice that made Mephisto itch with hatred suddenly sounded in his ear. I summon. In the Marvel Universe, just now, I played with and slaughtered a powerful but foolish lord of the flame hell, a duplication named Xiao Mo, Mephisto. Chu Shu's sneering voice suddenly sounded in Mephisto's ear. Accompanying the voice, there was also a mysterious power that even Mephisto couldn't understand. It seemed, as long as he nodded to indicate agreement, he would be summoned to the other person's side by this mysterious power. What kind of summoning ritual is this? Mephisto considered himself well traveled. But he had never heard of this kind of summoning method. Old bastard? Are you afraid to come? You. A true heavenly father, 
dare not descend in your true form. Just as Mephisto hesitated, Chu Shu's voice sounded in his ear again. Mocking as always, you dare to deceive a demon too much. Mephisto's teeth were about to shatter, this human. He had just schemed to kill one of his duplications and seize a part of his power. And now he wouldn't even hide from him, he actually dared to summon his true form to descend. Fine, 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 human. Do you think that killing one of my duplications puts you on par with me? You don't know your own limits, Mephisto gritted his teeth. The calm emotions he had just regained were ignited by anger once again. He was furious. I, Mephisto, agree to your summoning. He roared. Agreed to Chu Shu's summons. As soon as the words fell, a dazzling white light flashed, and a passage leading to Earth appeared. Mephisto stepped into it without hesitation. You fool who doesn't know any better. Now I'll show you what a true Heavenly Father is. As soon as the words, true Heavenly Father, were spoken, Mephisto passed through the passage and saw the scene on the other side. Long time no see, Mephisto, I heard. You're causing trouble for one of my juniors. On the other side of the passage was the Hall of Kamar Taj. The Ancient One sat in front of a coffee table, drinking tea expressionlessly. Seeing this scene, Mephisto's brain seemed to freeze. After a few seconds of daze, he finally regained his senses and also saw Chu Shu sitting next to the Ancient One, smiling at him. You! Mephisto was about to get angry. Smack! The Ancient One placed the teacup on the table. Mephisto once said, There is also a gap between the pseudo-heavenly fathers. Now the Ancient One proved with practical actions that there is also a gap between the true Heavenly Fathers. Sit down and let's talk, Mephisto helplessly. He could only glare fiercely at Chu Shu while pulling out a chair and sitting across from the Ancient One and Chu Shu. Chu Shu was not polite either and responded with a friendly international gesture, the middle finger. Sorry. Having someone backing you up is different. Cough. Seeing Chu Shu's action, the Ancient One coughed lightly. At the same time, she used a voice transmission spell to say in Chu Shu's ear, Don't forget about Strange. Don't worry. I've already found a mud truck. Chu Shu responded with a voice transmission spell as well. That's enough. I see the Ancient One and Chu Shu whispering to each other. The already furious Mephisto felt a hint of humiliation. Ancient One. I respect you as the Sorcerer Supreme, but don't forget, I am also a Lord of Hell. A Lord of Hell indeed. Are you really going to be my enemy for the sake of this human? Feeling humiliated, Mephisto unleashed his aura. Cracks began to appear in the mirror dimension. That's right. The hall where everyone was actually located was the mirror dimension. After all, negotiations between two level godfathers would be too dangerous in the real world. Mephisto, it seems you have forgotten that we were enemies. We have only temporarily reached a peace agreement. Facing Mephisto's threat, the Ancient One did not give in at all. Mephisto fell silent. It didn't expect the Ancient One's determination to protect this human to be so strong. Seeing that being tough wasn't working, Mephisto prepared to reason with the Ancient One. Ancient One, do you know what this human has done? He killed my son, Blackheart. And he also schemed to kill one of my duplications, taking away a part of my power. The more Mephisto spoke, the angrier it became. It felt that this matter was originally in its favor, and speaking more made it more imposing. After listening, the Ancient One couldn't help but glance at Chu Shu. You played such a big game. Boss, didn't you tell me to do whatever I wanted and you would take responsibility if something happened? Chu Shu and the Ancient One exchanged a sentence through telepathic magic. At the same time, Mephisto, who felt it was in the right, also became more aggressive. Ancient One. How do you think we should resolve this matter? I think. It should be like this. Chu Shu is my successor, and he took away your power. I don't see any problem with that. If you want to use this as an excuse to be unreasonable? The Ancient One paused for a moment and rolled up his sleeves. Then I don't mind fighting you. I'm causing trouble for no reason. Mephisto doubted if he had misheard. Having lost his son, lost his duplication, he now sought the Sorcerer Supreme to reason with him. You say I'm causing trouble for no reason, Ancient One. Do you really think I wouldn't dare to fight you? Mephisto's anger had reached its peak. The surrounding air seemed to solidify. The atmosphere became increasingly tense. A battle was about to break out. Stop pretending. 
However, the Ancient One seemed unaffected by the intense atmosphere. She picked up a glass of water from the coffee table, took a sip, and casually said. If you wanted to make a move, you would have done so already. Why wait until now? Mephisto fell silent. A sinister and cunning smile once again appeared on his face. You really can't hide anything from you, magician. But can you protect this boy, protect the earth for much longer? The power you stole, although it allowed you to live for hundreds of years, but. You must be losing control, right? Ancient one, your remaining lifespan is not much. Mephisto leaned back in his chair, as if regaining the upper hand. The Ancient One paused for a moment after putting down the teacup. Then she moved again. So what? Before I die, would you dare to make a move? The Ancient One put down the teacup. Her aura began to rise steadily. This was the first time Chu Shu felt the power possessed by the Ancient One, ancient, vast, and immense. This aura, with overwhelming force, instantly overshadowed Mephisto, engulfing him. You. Mephisto, who was just leaning on the chair earlier. Had to sit up straight. Facing the Ancient One seriously. Please leave, Mephisto. The next time you come seeking justice, remember. Kamar Taj has never been a place for reasoning. Ancient One issued a strong order to drive away the guests. He didn't give Mephisto, who is also a heavenly father, any face. I see through you. Mephisto gritted his teeth. But he still didn't dare to flip the table and fight with Ancient One. He could only leave with anger, and before leaving, he gave Chu Shu a fierce glare. But just as Mephisto was about to teleport back to hell, Chu Shu took out a card. Guests are always welcome. I'll see you off. In Mephisto's puzzled gaze, Chu Shu activated the exorcism ritual. A white light flashed. Even someone as strong as Mephisto had no resistance. In just an instant, he was enveloped by the white light and thrown back into the fiery hell in a rather ungraceful posture. Ah! 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 Mephisto, who enjoyed a free ride, not only didn't show gratitude. Instead, he screamed hysterically in hell, Chu Shu! I swear to kill you! A thousand times, not enough! The familiar curses continued. Perhaps this is the common language of the various hells. Lord Satan! Lord Satan! Just as Mephisto was going crazy. One of his demon generals quickly ran over, anxiously reporting. Lord Satan, during the time you were away, Ghost Rider broke in. And took away the burning soul named Eli. The demon general had obvious burn marks from iron chains on his body. Obviously, he had recently experienced a big battle. Mephisto was stunned. Suddenly, he no longer went crazy. It seemed like there were many things he wanted to say but couldn't say a word. Step back. I want to be alone for a while. After a long time, Mephisto finally spoke slowly. Kamar Taj. Silver ear bird's nest, you can eat it as a meal, I'll buy it for you after you finish. This is an essence lotion from a brand that hasn't been released yet. It's excellent for whitening and nourishing. You can use it as a toner. Eat and drink whatever you want, just tell me. Chu Shu took out a pile of gift boxes from his belt and placed them in front of the ancient one. There were things to eat, drink, and use. Don't play these tricks with me. The Ancient One had a stern face. She didn't even look at the gift boxes on the table. Seeing this, Chu Shu knew he had to play his trump card. He took out a bank card. Elder, I actually know that the economic situation of our Kamar Taj has not been good. The expenses for the brothers and sisters are quite high. Look at Wang, he has been losing weight recently. There's not much money in the account. Just a little over 50 million, a small token of appreciation. Chu Shu placed the bank card on the table and pushed it forward, pushing it in front of the Ancient One. During the time you were away from Kamar Taj, you learned this outside? The Ancient One accused Chu Shu on the surface. But secretly, she quietly put the bank card into her pocket. There was no other way, just as Chu Shu said. The economic situation of Kamar Taj has always been bleak. Although everyone can perform magic, the biggest rule of Kamar Taj is not to abuse magic. Not to mention using magic to make money by breaking the rules of the mundane world. Therefore, Kamar Taj is poor, really poor. Their main source of income is a gift shop they operate. Sometimes, when they are really poor, the magicians have to go down the mountain to earn some extra money themselves. For example, in the American TV series, She-Hulk, 
there was a scene where Wang went down the mountain and fought fake boxing with Zhongon. Even though they were already so poor. But the Ancient One is still the Sorcerer Supreme, the Elder, and she still has to maintain some dignity. Cough cough, don't do these meaningless things in the future. You go and solve the matter with Strange quickly, that would be a great help to me. Ancient One cleared their throat. They pretended to be serious and said, good. The mud truck is ready. I will go and create Doctor Strange right away. Seeing Ancient One accept the bank card, Chu Shu jokingly smiled. Humming a little tune. Satisfied, they left Kamar Taj. Sigh. Watching Chu Shu's departing figure. Ancient One shook their head. Then, using telepathy magic, they called for Wang. Elder, did you summon me? Soon. Wang's chubby figure appeared in front of Ancient One. You haven't slimmed down. Ancient One muttered, then directly handed the bank card to Wang. That kid had a change of heart, knowing about Kamar Taj's financial difficulties, he gave us 50 million. 50 million. Learning that there were over 50 million in the account. Wang was so startled that he almost dropped the card. By the Vashanti. I've never seen so much money in my life. Trembling, Wang felt that the card was scorching hot. All right, you keep the money. Remember to improve the food in the cafeteria. Look at you, you're almost unrecognizably thin. Huh. Am I thin? Wang lowered his head and looked at his big belly. Just as he was wondering. Ancient One waved their hand and sent him away with the card worth over 50 million. From beginning to end. Ancient One showed no expression towards the money. But after seeing Wang off, they turned to the pile of miscellaneous gift boxes on the table. However, they shook their head and smiled. What a waste of money.